So here we go. We are back again. We are ready for a draft right out of the gates of this episode two by design. Why? Because, well, like I mentioned, I wanted this episode to be, you know, remembered uh, for more of a, a higher note and a better start compared to how the last episode ended, which was just not great. <laughs> and uh, this episode, if the draft doesn't work out, at least we have the hopeful return of Nick Ruscia to work out for us. So let's get right down to business. We're kicking things off with this draft. Now, uh, as you may recall, it wasn't looking like the best draft in the world. Tell me if you've heard that before. Unfortunately, uh, Mario Debien will not be joining the Debien. Will not be joining this team, unfortunately. Uh, I wish that would be very nice right about now. But then again, we don't even have the third overall pick. So, hey, what are you going to do? Uh, Stefan Gauthier Leduc will not be here. Guy Delisle, or good old Guy Delisle, but we're, we go with Guy. But I'd want to call him Guy. You get the point. It's going to be a weird episode. First player that we have available to us is Aaron Sim. So yeah, and then hopefully Cesar Danny Pepe, which again is just the name of the series so far. Uh, also the Canadian. Oh no, he's American. So yeah, there you go. Maybe the son of Doc Emmer. Uh, Stefan Marchand, not available to us. Not like we need another goaler. Uh, yeah, yeah, goaler. Let's go with goaler. Defensively, we got a couple medium top sixes. There's quite a few Islanders available. Uh, got a member of the Titan available to us here. But yeah, this is going to be pretty rough. But I think we're used to these kind of disappointing drafts, all things considered. There's another franchise player. Good Lord, I feel like that's three or four. That we've seen already. So, uh, with this pick, I mean, we know we're going to get both of these two. Uh, between Aaron Sim and Mr. Cesar Denny Pepin, who does not have size or strength. We're going to take Aaron Sim, because I need a defenseman to actually be instilled with confidence. He is a 62, <laughs> medium top six. One of these things is not like the other. Good lord. We go to the 35th. Overall selection, and again, it is pretty much written in stone. Yeah, it's going to be one Denny Pepin, and we'll see if we end up with Emmerich after this. But S, or the, not the SDP, it's the CDP. There you go. Says uh, Denny Pepin is uh, yeah about as about as eh, as you would have expected. I mean, two you know two guys who are going to be you know third pairing defense, bottom six forward type of deal. Which isn't the worst thing in the world, I suppose. Unfortunately, uh, my other option is off the board here. It's fine, though, because Emmerich was a 62 low top six. So we might not be missing all that much now that we look at it. But that means out of the next two picks, I mean, we should be okay to take Raphael Ule here. I would expect. Yeah, and then Gosselin should still be available, too. So, uh, yeah, physical, slow... Yeah, he's going to be a defensive defenseman, but welcome aboard. Hopefully another medium top six, another medium top six. I mean, we're doing all right. No major game changers here, but you need your role players, right? Gosselin would be the next option. And yeah, he's going to be before we see Jamie Morgan of Moncton. Hoping for another medium top six defenseman here. Another big boy defenseman as well. Five years out, let's go for him. Gosselin, how good are you? He is a medium top six, so no low top sixes, no low top nine forwards. I'm okay with this. We need a defenseman, too, in this draft. So, all in all, I'm okay with this, actually, compared to some of the other drafts that we've seen. Uh, let's double check here, though, in upcoming players beyond Morgan. Uh, Cade Darby, another defenseman out of Moncton. The problem is he's 20 years old already. Uh, we see our first Sea Dog in Antoine Deschamps, which, eh. Yeah, there's not going to be a ton available to us here, is there? And then we got Durand, Veyu, a couple of guys who are towards the low 200s. So, not that we need another goalie, but we will take Morgan here. I mean, 6 2, so he's not the smallest goalie in the world, which is nice. He is a medium fringe. Compared to some of the other drafts that we've had, this isn't that bad. It really isn't. And obviously, Cade Darby, despite being an overager, will be the pick here. I don't think this guy's ever going to make it, but we'll risk it with him. 
And double check. Yep, nope. He needed that low four to ever have a chance. So it brings us to the seventh round. Of course, I believe we had to swap picks uh, with Anaheim in a way to try and get Rusia back, and that didn't even work, so that was wonderful. Uh, but let's see who we have here in terms of potential, and the answer is basically nobody. Cool. All right. Let's do what we've done before then. I don't. I wish this was NHL 18 where you could find a really good overager again that could change your team. You know, I think, what was it, NHL 18, you know, with Drafted Glory Goon Squad, where I think we drafted a couple of guys who were just ridiculously good. But it's not looking like that's going to happen. Actually, here, to look at the younger players, and one of them, holy shit. This dude's 6'7", seven, it's 17 years old. Laurent Gaudet, the center. You know, a 6'7", seven, 17-year-old center... <laughs> Yep. No, damn it, he's on Sherbrooke, though. <laughs> no. If I ever wanted one exception, damn it. He's not even going to be good, but I really want to draft him. Damn it. Oh, that sucks. He'd be such an interesting player to draft. There's also Antoine Broussard, another defenseman. If we were to just look at Giants on skates, you got Brad Haskins. Bernard Furland. A couple of other dudes who could be worth drafting. A 6'7", 17-year-old center, though. Super tempted to pick that guy up. DeAndre Funk, Dustin Dodge. I guess we found all of our dudes here that were draft eligible. They're right here at the bottom of the pecking order. And, yeah, Gaudette is the one that I'm super interested in. But there's no, I, I'm not going to break the rules, even in the seventh round. I'm not going to do it. No matter how much I want to. So it comes down to one of these guys. Uh, we have a couple of defensemen. Another goalie and a winger. So Broussard, not much from him. Except for some penalty minutes. Same for Furland. Uh, Dodge was capable of putting up some points. He's 19 though. So we know he's not going to be able to develop as much. And then there's the overager and Funk. Or we have Haskins. If we wanted to just take a chance on another goalie. I mean, this is Funk's last year in the draft. Broussard and Ferland will be here next year. Let's just take a chance on DeAndre Funk from Halifax. And, yeah, he's not very good. That's okay. So, it would have been nice to uh, to take that guy. I don't think he would have been drafted either, unfortunately. So, hey, that is what it is. But we go to the resign phase. Uh, potentially losing our head coach and two scouts, so we won't have as much to do in that department. Let's take a look here. So, yeah, Rusia is not showing up, so we're going to have to bring him back. Uh, Jocelyn at a low fringe. I'm not signing. So, Roy Jocelyn, fifth round pick in 2029. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and let him go. Uh, but is this Jacques Dubot? It is the 19-year-old. Seventh round pick in 2029. He is going to get signed, though. Might as well give him a shot. And hopefully, again, Rusia and a veteran will fill out the goaltending. For the defense... Sean Bates up to an 81, so it'll net him a decent little contract. We have Belmar as well, and Philippi Sove. So, defensively, it's not that bad. Kamachi, for some reason, keeps developing, too. So, he might make the NHL squad this year. And from there, if we were to optimize who the hell we're signing, I mean, I don't think Keaton Cyphers is going to make it, but we might as well give him a shot. All six foot five of them. And, I mean, yeah, then you have all these medium top sixes that we just picked up in the draft. We're going to have to try to bring back everybody. So, Mr. Plandowski, Plandowski, Plandowski. Let's go ahead and give you a max deal to see if you'll come back. Uh, Bouchard is definitely worth signing. Charlie DeRoche will look to bring you back as well. Lenebeau and good old friggin. And that should do it there. Who do we have for the forwards that need to be re-signed? We have Mr. Huckins, our captain. Six million bucks, no problem. LaPierre, capping out at an 81. You have Duchesne. Again, not looking that bad as well. Boucher, I don't hate the way the top six looks like right now, especially with Corzini being up to an 86. Obviously, we want to bring back Gill. Marcourt, despite being a disappointment and not developing, we're going to bring him back. Lalonde as well. Probably try to play him in the NHL this year to get him to develop. Kearns and Bochensky, I don't know yet. Brady Burns. We'll bring back McIntyre. Maybe some late development from him. 
Hines is one where you could say, do we force him to the NHL right now? But we don't really have to. I think is the key there. We're not really at that stage where we're desperate for certain players to develop. Zimmerman's 21 and only a 57. Yeah, we're not going to be signing Zimmerman. Jesus, that's brutal. So let's advance a day. Make sure that everybody re-signs. And we had a couple of players reject. For the most part, everybody signed. So again, the goaltending situation will bring back Russia, no matter how the hell uh, we have to try and make that happen. Defensively, nobody rejected, which is good. So forward-wise, I think it was Huckins and Gill. Indeed, LaPierre as well. So for Mr. Huckins, let's go ahead and uh, drop it down to one year, give him that extra bit of money. Same for LaPierre, which I thought it was already at one mil, or one year, I should say, not one mil. But we'll bump up that money total. And Mr. Gill, also bump up the money that we're looking to give you. So just to double check here, in terms of prioritizing who we're going to sign. I hate to say it, but I think Brady Burns might be out of contract. Let's double check here. So 1, 2, 3, 4. So that's 8 there with Gill. 9, 10, 11, and 12 in theory with Jaren Delorier. And then the AHL is 1, 2, 3, 4. Let's just see how many we have signed. So 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So we already have 12 forwards signed. I mean, Orr is not going to make it. So right now it's the question of who stays versus, hey, who do you keep just to make sure that the AHL is a little bit more competitive. So I hate to say it, but Oliver, Sam Oliver, is going to be cut. Fourth round pick way back in 2022, nine years ago. We are going to release Sam Oliver. And hate to say it as well, Brady Burns from that initial draft class is going to be dropped as well. And then it comes down to the likes of Bochensky and Kearns, and I think, you know, they'll be the ones to stay. So Reed Shore, sixth round pick in 2027. Decent puck skills category, but he's going to be dropped. And Zane Takashi, 69 overall. The memes write themselves, but he is going to be cut as well. Uh, and we'll look to bring back Kearns and Bochensky, both low nine. You never know, there might be some kind of wild development that sees them into the NHL. So let's see here. Is everyone going to accept? The answer appears to be yes. So we're good. Quick and easy. In the re-sign phase, we do have to say goodbye to some people. I'm going to lose that head coach for the moment, which is okay. I mean, I'm intrigued to see who's out there as a staff member. Normally, I do skip this stuff, but hey, why not suffer with me right now, right? We need uh, goalie coaches, and we need... An NHL head coach. Is there an A-plus NHL head coach? There is. There are. Blunden, Lemaire, and Reinhardt. I don't think a veteran coach will do us much good. But B teaching on him, A-plus, it's clearly Jacques Lemaire, which is hilarious that he has that name. It's clearly going to be Jacques Lemaire. He's not the best fit with the players that you see right there, but that is perfectly fine by me. Even if LaRue's a better fit, Hugo's a horrible fit, we have to just throw... Every penny we possibly can at Jacques Lemaire and hope that he signs with us. That's pretty much the best thing we can hope for. So will he sign with us? You'll find out in the preseason, won't you? All right, and here we are. The preseason, the team is set. Everything about the team is set. So allow me to showcase to you the 2031-2032 New Figralers starting off with the coaching situation where we did Lock down one Jacques Lemaire. So an A-plus level coach, which again, will hopefully up the quality here. We also get a B-minus goalie coach, which is pretty nice. We have 16 A or A-minus QMJHL scouts, which means basically nothing. But as you get a look at the team, this is what we're dealing with here. A top line of Wes Corazzini, Zach LaRue, and Aiden Hannon. So not the best line chemistry we could get, but our three best players at this stage. Maybe not in terms of overall, but who we're really banking on. Second line, I have a lot of hope for. You know, maybe that's misguided, but Jacques Lapierre, Cole Huckins, and Guy Boucher. Of course, we're trying to boost up Hannon and Corazzini with them being next to LaRue. Uh, obviously, Lapierre and Boucher had been in that role before and did decently well, but... Now we need them to deliver on that second line. Third line, we do see Laurent and Jaren Delorier make the team next to Pascal Duchesne and Donovan Marcourt, who again, hoping for some slight development out of. And on the fourth line, Yohan Lashing, 
next to Justin Gill and Jordan DeMay. So, all in all, not that bad of a team, really. Pretty happy with it. Defensively, it's where we see an interesting change. Jamison Kamachi is going to be on that top pairing. A sixth-round pick in 2026, and with good offensive awareness... Can't skate worth a damn, but he is going to be next to Hugo Laflamme, so we'll see what happens there. Second pair is now Sean Bates alongside Simon Belmar, and a third pairing of Philippe Sobe with Pierre Leroy, so not too bad. Some people have said Lawa, which just, no, he's, he's Leroy, damn it. I'll play the Leroy Jenkins clip if I have to every time I say his name. Goaltenders. Now, it's a chemistry thing, because if you go best lines, or a morale thing, because if you go best lines, he's still the starter, but Elliot Cousineau is here, who's obviously higher than the 74 overall because he's listed as a backup goalie, whereas Geet is a minor backup goalie, but a legitimate 76. That is the tandem this year. You know, I'm tempted to say that Geet gets one more season down in the AHL. I kind of want to pay close attention to how many games he's getting. It's it's a tough call. I might actually make that change. And, of course, no healthy scratches. The AHL, uh, highlighted by this top three of Philippe Rayom, Alex Lalonde, and Tim Orr, who, again, not really expecting much out of. But we do have a decent uh, overall spread there. So I kind of expect this team to be a playoff team this year, especially with the defense, Deshaun, Bouchard, Lemino, Traverse, and Cyphers, friggin'. So it's it's okay. The goaltenders, Penner, and he's back. We found him in the free agent list. Russia is back. And i got to be honest... I think I'm going to make that change in goal. I think I want to secure a starting spot for Geet for one more season to be the guy, get a crap ton of games down in the AHL. I just think it's the best move that we could make at this stage instead of Geet getting some NHL games. So that is the setup. Kusino and Russia are back. Let's take a look. At the upcoming draft class, because this upcoming season, I have no idea where we're going to be. Are we going to be a play? There's a Chinese option in the top four. What? <laughs> Since when does that still happen? Josh Hutchinson out of China. Huh. Huh. Maybe we make an exception. How come this couldn't be like Nations United where it's like, yeah, cool, we could get Bits or Hutchinson. What the hell is that? That was out of nowhere. Anyway, we go to the queue. That is bizarre. I, uh, wow. I haven't seen a random player like that towards the top of a board in a long time and a lot of different games uh, prior. But we have Quebec by Como again, which doesn't work. So we do have a player who's projected to go in the first round, Silas Chan, another defenseman. A couple of other options here, perhaps? No. So we do have at least a defenseman projected to go in the first round. We'll take a look at a lot of that, you know, other uh, turn of events there on the draft board throughout the season. But yeah, there's, there's at least one decent player to keep our eye on that, let's be honest, unless we have a deep playoff run, he should be available to us. But to take a look, we should see the best numbers that we have seen yet. Maybe not in goaltending, though, uh, because of that change. But an 82 offense, 78 defense, 66 goaltending, which, again, could be a little bit higher and makes no sense because both of our goaltenders are well over a 66 overall. I don't understand how it comes to the conclusion of, yeah, deciding those overalls. But I digress. Let's get into the season set. I'm not going to cliffhanger you two episodes in a row. We'll sim to January 1st. Really, with the line combinations, I still don't think I'm going to do much in terms of tinkering. We have people set up pretty much exactly where we would want them to be, I'd say. I don't really hate uh, where we're at right now in terms of, like, okay, you know, the guys were clearly on, you know, having on the top line, trying to get them better time. Sure, the dudes on the fourth line who have been around for a long time might be able to to do a little bit of a better job in terms of putting up points. But, yeah, I'd much, much rather just give, you know, those younger players an entire season next to LaRue to see if they can develop. And, I mean, right now we're hanging in there at around 500, which is, you know, probably the expectation for this season. If we were going to make the playoffs, we're going to do it by sneaking in, which, you know, we did a few years ago now. 
But all in all, 17-18-2, we're in the playoff conversation at the midway point of the season. I don't hate it. Hugo's leading the team. 36 points. It takes 42 to be in the postseason. The Bruins have six wins through 37 games. But to look here, Corazzini, 26 points and 37. It's not too bad. LaRue on 32. And the 23 for Hannon. LaPierre with 17 goals. Huckins doing okay. Boucher has not done much, though. Huh. Interesting. Defensively, Kamachi has an ungodly amount of penalty minutes, despite... Yeah, does he he must be set to fight a lot, even though he has 83 discipline and 73 fighting skill. That's can you still edit that? Can you still edit that? Because that really doesn't make sense for it to be whoops. For it to be randomly generated like that. Like, I'm sorry, but like, oh yeah, no, I have great defense and I'm not a fighter, but I'm gonna drop the gloves all the time and take a thousand penalty minutes a season. It doesn't really make much sense. It's the only thing I can think of, right? There you go. Fighter set to often. Might consider it cheating, but I think that's ridiculous. There's no indication that he should be a fighter. Well, just because he doesn't have good fighting skill doesn't mean he's not a fighter. Maybe. But I mean, come on. <laughs> come on now. Like, that guy's fighting more than Zach Ronaldo would in a season to this stage. And it is severely and negatively affecting the team. So that might just be something I do. Like, if I notice that someone's taking a crap load of penalty minutes when they shouldn't, I might just make that edit. Some people might find it cheap, like I said. But all in all, I, uh, yeah, yeah, I, I need to make that change because that is absolutely killing our chances taking that many, uh, taking that many penalty minutes. So, yeah, we'll see what happens now. I mean, we're doing a little bit better, 24, 21, and 4. On the verge of a playoff spot, 52 points. It takes 53 to make it in. So, we're hanging around. We're not doing that badly. Let's take a look here really quickly at the penalty minutes of other players. It's like 76 fighting skill, but 87 discipline for Corazzini. You know, we, uh, we, you know, you know. Now, you could call it cheap because AI teams don't get to make these adjustments. You know, I won't change anymore. Let me know what you think. We'll make that call. It might cost us this season. Do I have to change Corazzini back? Or not Corazzini, but uh, Kamachi. You know, the AI teams don't get to edit it, so do I have to suffer as well? I, I'd say that's fair, but hey, let me know what you think. That might be our one way of trying to even up the odds, uh, given that we already have you know, this massive uphill battle to climb, of course, but that's the point of the series. So let me know what you think, but no doubt the extra penalty minutes aren't doing us any favors. But here we go now with a decent, what, 22 games left to go? 21 games left to go. Decent math for me. Hmm. Let's sim to the midway point here. The 14th against Calgary. That's the game where I want to pay attention. This team needs to start winning. Losing a bit too consistently here. But if this team can start winning down the back half of the uh, the month here, we might just have a chance to make the playoffs again. We are seven points back of the Leafs with the game at hand. It takes 76 points to make the playoffs. We lose to Calgary. We lose to Carolina. Yikes. Chicago. It's a win. All right. Looks like the Leafs didn't really take advantage of that too much. The Lightning on 85 it takes 79 points, so we're 8 points out of a playoff spot. Big 5 nothing win over Pittsburgh. We might have a chance here. Still 79 points, so we're 6 points out of a playoff spot right now behind Pittsburgh, who we just crushed. Vegas, it's a win. Vancouver, a big-time loss. Where are we now with 8 games to go? Takes 83 points to make it. We're 8 points back. I think we're going to be a little bit further. Yeah, we just lost again. Burnaby made the playoffs, which is nice, but it looks like we're going to fall just short of making the playoffs this season. you got to wonder, of course, those extra penalty minutes, how much that factored in. Six points out. We need to win out here. Essentially, we lose to the Islanders. We get absolutely demolished by the Sharks, and that is the dream over. Yeah, that's it. So no playoffs again for the Growlers. We were in contention for the majority of the season, but six points back of the Penguins here. It's obviously not going to happen. We put up a good fight 
nowhere near the bottom of the uh, of the standings, but ultimately not close enough. Like I said, the extra penalty minutes could be a factor, or it could just be a simple factor uh, that we're not good enough yet at this stage. Goals four, we were mid-table somewhere. Closer to the top half of the table at a 3.2. Not bad at all. Goals against. Where the hell were we in terms of goals against? Not bad at a 3-2-4. Like, we were a pretty good team this year. The big question now, total power plays. Okay, somewhere mid-table. How many penalties did we take? You know, we didn't. We actually took the fewest amount of penalties in the league. <laughs> okay. I wish I, It's just the fighting majors, though, and I can't see... How many fighting majors we took? I'm gonna have to check by individual player, aren't I? I'm going. I'm gonna have to. Uh, for the forwards, though, Larue led the way with 70 points. Lop here with 36 goals and 63 points. Corazzini with 63 points. 137 penalty minutes for Corazzini, which is nuts. 57 points, 20 goals for Huckins. Duchesne and Hannon were both fine. Boucher was solid. The secondary scoring, honestly, the scoring was fine. And then defensively, Hugo may have just won a Norris, probably not. With that plus minus, Kamachi put up 30 points. And goaltending wise, Kusno just wasn't where we needed him to be, and Rusi is not a good enough backup. But hopefully, hopefully that decision to play our younger goalie in the AHL for one more season pays off. So we see the amount of hits. We do have a pretty physical team. I do appreciate that. Yeah, see, look at this 21 fights for Corazzini. That's insane. Duchesne dropping the gloves four times. That's fine. 21 fights for Corazzini. Kamachi had 17 before I took that away from him. So again, 21 times 5, 105 penalty minutes out of the 137 were from fights. How badly did that screw us in terms of Corazzini, one of our best players, not being on the ice, despite the fact he has good discipline and a relatively low fighting skill. Not that bad. He's not even the most physical or aggressive player in the world. So, I completely agree. We could just leave it. It is what it is. Bad luck of the draw. But also, that is kind of ridiculous that he took 105 minutes uh, worth of fighting majors this season when he's not an enforcer. You know? So that really did kind of screw us. Let me know what you think. What do we do with that? I will say I'm not the most happy with it in the world as you get a look at the scoring here. Nathan McKinnon and Patrick Line going off defensively. Hugo probably lost out to Ryan Merkley. 29 goals for Hugo. I feel like it was really understated, and I apologize for that. And top save percentage probably goes to Caden Wisniewski in Washington. For the top rookie, Desmond Ma is likely to win it. Actually, plus minus, they might give it to Kyle Maloney in St. Louis, but there you go. That brings another season to a close. I'm going to end the episode off the back of that. Next episode, of course, will be another draft and the Burnaby playoff run where they took the North Division off the back of a really good season from Alex Lalonde. So we'll continue to follow along with their journey, and hopefully they have as deep of a playoff run as possible for the sake of potential development. But let me know what you think about the fighting. Hopefully you enjoyed the episode. Thank you very much for watching, for supporting me, for supporting this channel. I love you all. I will see you in the next one. Until then, have a good one, take it easy, and bye-bye. <laughs>